Hello, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Really for anyone who has been baptized, who wants to live more wholeheartedly our baptismal vows, they fell to their knees and they asked forgiveness for their sins. Serve God and serve neighbor. And I felt it really strongly on my heart and I felt like the Lord was really putting it on my heart. Because we all have been created with a, be a very special purpose and mission. Well, here I am, brothers and sisters, to finish up John chapter 16 and begin John chapter 17 with you. And so I'm going to recap a little bit of what was in uh, 16 or where we actually left off with 16. And if you remember that uh, Jesus tells the apostles, and in a little while you will not see me, and then in a little while you will see me. And they're like, what is he talking about? And um, Jesus is trying to make it clear to them that in the flesh, as Jesus, he's fully human and fully divine, that in the flesh, he must die. And, but don't worry, he is going to return to the father from whom he came from in the first place. Because he makes it clear over and over and over again, I came from the Father. He is constantly saying he and the Father are one, and that he has been with the Father since the foundation of the world. So that people get this, that Jesus is God, and he and the Father are one. And then later he will say, and the Holy Spirit is one with them. So we have the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Notice throughout 14, 15, 16, and 17, Jesus is constantly referring to the Father. He never calls God Mother. And we hear this a lot these days. I've heard it several times for people saying, God is Mother. No. This is not what Jesus said. This is clearly not what Jesus said. And as we read further, you are going to see more clearly what Jesus is saying to us. He couldn't make it more clear than what he has said in 14, 15, 16, 17. Those that are saying, no, no, God is mother, they're not reading the scriptures. They're not reading the Word of God. They're not living the Word of God. They're making it be what they want it to be. So it's not putting down motherhood in any way, but we're just trying to say here, Jesus came from the Father. He was begotten of the Father. and never says he was begotten of the mother. In his human form, he was born of a woman. In his human form, he came from mother, mother Mary. And so let us go on to John chapter um, halfway through 16. So Jesus says to his apostles, I have said this to you in figures. The hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures, but tell you plainly of the father. Now he's trying to explain it to them in figures by he, you know, he's, he's giving them like little analogies and stories and so forth to try to explain to them about what is about, what is going to happen between him and the father and them. And so he says, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the father for the, the father for you, for the father himself loves you. I want you to know that the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from the father. I came from the father and have come into the world. Again, I am leaving the world and going to the father. So I came into the world because the father sent me. And then he says again, I am leaving the world and going to the Father. In his human flesh, he's going to leave the world and go to the Father. So he's trying to make this very clear 
to the disciples. And so the disciples go, aha, ah, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figures. And it has this in an exclamation point that they had, they thought an aha moment. Now we know that you know all things, Jesus, and need none to question you. By this we believe that you came from God. And Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Do you now believe? Do you think you now believe? And he says after this, the hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you, you will be scattered, every man to his home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. Let us just unpack that for a moment, what the Lord just said. The hour is coming. His suffering is coming. Indeed, it has come. It has arrived. It has come. And when, when you will be scattered, you are going to be scattered. You, you're going to run away. And we read in, in uh, the Gospel of John, as the soldiers come for Jesus, what do they do? They scatter. Just like Jesus said, they scatter. They run away for fear. And so Jesus is just letting them know that ahead of time. He sees it coming. So... He tells them, every man to his home, and you will leave me alone, yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me, because the Father and I are one, and the Father has, has not left me. I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. Remember he says, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. In the world, you have tribulation. You have tribulation. Don't we all? In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So be of good cheer, Jesus is saying, because I have overcome the world. And because I have overcome the world, you too can overcome the world. Because remember, the Father and I are one, and we want you to be one with us. So, let us go on further. In, in uh, chapter 17, it's going to blow your mind what Jesus prays and how he prays. It is very in-depth. Some may get this and some may not. But really ponder it and pray about it and ask the Father and the Son to reveal to you the truths in this gospel. So, Jesus ends chapter 16 with, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And in 17, he says this. Well, it says this. When Jesus had spoken these words, he then lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, and this is where he begins a most profound prayer as he prays to the Father. He says, Father, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy Son, that the Son may glorify thee. Since you have given him power over all flesh, given Jesus power over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. You, Father, have given him. He's talking about himself. And this is eternal life, that they know you, Father, the only true God, 
And this is eternal life. That they, the apostles and us and you, and you and me, that they know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. This is eternal life, that they know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Jesus then goes on to say, I glorified you on earth. Father, I glorified you. Having accomplished the work which you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me in your own presence with the glory which I had with you before the world was made. Let us unpack this for a moment, brothers and sisters, too. This is very profound, what Jesus is saying. And he's praying this to the Father because he really wants us to pray in this way as well. He says, And this is eternal life, that they know the, the, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I glorified you on earth, Father, having accomplished the work which you gave me to do. Now, how would that be if we were to pray this prayer ourselves? O oh Lord, I have accomplished the work, Father, I have accomplished the work that you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify thou me in thy own presence with the glory which I had with thee before the world was made. So Jesus is teaching us, number one, his divinity, absolute divinity. He doesn't want them to get totally caught up in his humanity and forget about his divinity. He wants them to be totally integrated and realize that the divinity and the humanity are combined together. And here he is saying that it is possible for the father to live in him in his human, in his human form, because it's the spirit, the spirit that we're looking at brothers and sisters. And so this is what God is desiring for you and for me to have the Trinity dwelling within us, for us to be aware of that. We're not just these human beings now that have no purpose. Jesus came to give us purpose. Jesus came to give your life meaning, a profound, profound meaning that he wants you to be one with the Father and the Son. This is transforming union, brothers and sisters. This is intimacy, into me see, that Jesus and the Father and the Spirit are desiring us to have. And so Jesus goes on further. He says, I have manifested your name, Father, to the men, the apostles, whom you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and you gave them to me. So we belong to the Father, and the Father gave us to Jesus and Jesus to us. Okay? And they have kept your word, Father, because they've kept my word. Jesus said, remember what he said earlier. If you keep my word, they will keep your word. If you... If they don't keep my word, they won't keep your word. And so thine they were, and thou gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me, Father, 
is from thee, from you. For I have given them the words which you gave me. So everything Jesus is saying and everything Jesus taught came from the Father, not from Jesus, from the Father. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, Father. And they have believed that you did send me. I am praying for them. And Jesus is praying for you. And he's praying for me. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, Father. For they are yours. All mine are thine. And thine are mine. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, is what Jesus is saying. And I am glorified in them. Because now, Jesus is going to be living in each and every one of us, the Father. Because the Father sent him for this very purpose. Not to just die for our sins, but to be one with us. God. Wanting to be one with us? Wow! This is amazing. And now I am no more in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Father. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one, Father. Do you get it what Jesus is saying, brothers and sisters? That they, us, may be one, even as the Father and the Son are one? Do you see the level God is raising you to and me to? And yet we, most of the times, choose to live in the dirt of the world and yet God is raising us to the heights and we prefer a matchstick to the sun. This is amazing, brothers and sisters. Amazing what Jesus is saying. And then he goes on to say that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, Father. He was always talking about the Father, always keeping them in the name of the Father. Which you have given me, Jesus says. And I have guarded them. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. It is very clear in this part of the scriptures that Jesus is saying that he lost a son, Judas. Now, at this point, Judas did not hang himself yet, but he hung himself in mortal sin because he totally turned away from God. And brothers and sisters, that's what mortal sin is. It is a complete turning away from God. And Judas chose to do this. It says that when he received the Eucharist, when he received the bread, when Jesus was having the Last Supper, which was the Eucharist, which he was talking about, this is my body, this is my blood. As soon as he received the morsel, it said, Satan entered him. He committed sacrilege. He was already living in mortal sin. And then it says in that scripture passage, and it was darkness. So now Jesus goes on to say about how uh, the son of, that he lost none except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to thee, to you, Father. 
And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus is wanting to fill us with joy, his lasting joy, not this ha 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 silliness, not that, not that kind of joy, but a deep, profound joy in knowing that we and the Father and Jesus are one, that this is what he came for and this is what he desires. And when you receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, think of this. He's in you. This is what he's saying. I am in you and the father is in you and the spirit is in you and you are in me and you are in the father and you are in the spirit. He's telling us this over and over and over again, brothers and sisters. So I'm only repeating it several times because Jesus repeated it several times. Apparently, We need to hear it over and over again so that the evil one will not have power over us. He doesn't want you to know this. He doesn't want you to know that God wants transforming union with you and with me, that he wants to live in us, act in us, move in us. He doesn't want that. He wants to keep bringing us down, 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 living only in the human realm in the flesh. He doesn't want you to live in the spirit. That's his plan. He wants us to be banal, live in the flesh, do what you want, do what you will. Forget Jesus. Forget the Father. You don't need them. This is what the evil one is wanting to tell each and every one of us. He's saying, no, 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 no. He's not your father. I'm your father. That's what the devil is wanting to tell each and every one of us. I'm your father. And do you know that he's done this, that those who have given themselves to the devil and later on have had conversions, the devil revealed himself as their father. How can you turn against your father? He says, but he's the father of lies, Jesus says. And so we probably need to end on that note because I don't want this video to get too long to where you're going to get bored or you're going to say, this is way too long. I don't have time for this. So we will continue this as soon as possible. And may Jesus bless you. And may you realize that he lives in you and he desires to live in you and he wants to live in you and the Father wants to live in you and the Spirit wants to live in you. Jesus, may we be one as you and the Father are one. God bless. Hello, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Really, for anyone who has been baptized, who wants to live more wholeheartedly our baptismal vows, they fell to their knees and they asked forgiveness for their sins. Serve God and serve God. And I felt it really strongly on my heart, and I felt like the Lord was really putting it on my heart. We all have been created with a a very special purpose and mission 